Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to describe my top passive income trade selling perpetual futures. Some of the things I'm going to claim seem too good to be true, but I will justify my numbers and statements by going back through the historical funding history. In the last three months, this trade has returned me and anyone else doing it an annualized return of over 100%. It is relatively low risk and you are not exposed to the market going up or down. The returns are generated by other traders misunderstanding the funding mechanisms on the future contracts and massively overpaying for funding, or you could say you're profiting from their FOMO. So if you're looking for a way to make an interest on the crypto craze without exposing yourself, this video may be for you. This trade can be done on any site that has perpetual futures that uses a funding fee, like a BitMEX, Bitfinex, Deribit, and probably other sites, I'm going to be using Binance. The reason I'm using it is simply that the returns are higher than the others, at least at the moment. This is likely due to the large number of retail users that use Binance. My channel is still growing and to help fund it, I have affiliate links for many cryptocurrency sites in the description below. Even if you don't use my links, make sure you use someone's as when you first sign up to a site, they do save you a lot on fees and it's silly to pay more than you need to. We'll start off on Binance's futures page, and as you can see, it's quite complicated. I'll stay on the screen for a minute to explain what funding is, and then as I was a teacher in my former life, I will move over to the whiteboard to explain the general trade. This number I've highlighted up here, the mark price, and this is the current price of a future contract. Beside it is the index price, which is the same as the spot price, usually averaged over multiple exchanges. That is, if you were to buy real Ethereum, this is what it would cost you, as opposed to here on futures, where you're buying and selling fake Ethereum. Now, this funding number here is what keeps these two other prices close together. If the mark price goes too far above the index price, longs will have to pay shorts, this percentage every eight hours. This will keep the mark from getting too far ahead. And similar happens if it goes in the other direction. Now, the big question is, why are people willing to pay more than the real price for Ethereum and then pay a funding price every eight hours? Well, for one thing, on futures, they can use leverage, which is like borrowing money. And of course, borrowing money costs money. But I believe it is mainly because a lot of retail investors don't realize just how much funding adds up to. We will go into the historical data for funding and calculate that number exactly. Now, let's get over to the whiteboard to explain the trade. The main idea of this trade is to have yourself balanced. You want to buy some assets. In, in this example, we're going to be using Ethereum. I do recommend you use Ethereum or Bitcoin. They're both quite stable, which is important, and they still give a reward. But you can use any asset you want. But the idea is to buy some of this asset, some Ethereum, in a spot account, and then make a bet against it in a futures account. And you, we're going to want these to be balanced. I'm going to run us through an example here. We're going to take $100 starting money as an example. And we're going to be putting $80 of that into a spot account. And the other $20 into a futures account. Now with this $80, we're going to buy some Ethereum. It, that works out to be about 0.045 Ethereum. With the $20 in the futures account, we're going to use leverage and we're going to make an $80 bet, a minus $80 bet. We're going to sell 0.045 Ethereum. This will leave us perfectly balanced in Ethereum. If the price goes up or down, it won't change. We'll make some money here, lose some here. Make some here, lose some there. And at the end of the day, we have $80 and $20. This is the basics of the trade. And if everything were to stay like this, we would every eight hours simply be making money on this number here. We'd be making that funding number multiplied by this one, multiplied by the price of Ethereum. Or really the funding number multiplied by $80 if it's dead at this price. So every eight hours you would make money. Now I'm gonna look at a few examples to see what would happen if the price went up or down, how it would affect our trade. And there is one important thing. If the price goes up 25%, we're gonna find that's where the danger of this trade lies. In a first example, I'm gonna assume the market falls 25% and let's see what would happen. If the market fell 25%, your $80 worth of Ethereum would now only be worth $60. It would have fallen 25% or $20. 
you would still have $20 in your futures account, but your bet would have been a good one. You bet against Ethereum. You bet Ethereum would fall. It was an $80 size bet. This was the same size here. That bet would have made you another $20. So now you would have $40 in your futures account. You'd have 20 real dollars and 20 unrealized dollars. That, that confuses it slightly, but I think we can sim simply think of it as $40 and 60. So as you can see, you add it together and you still have your $100. So the market falling 25% hasn't affected you much. The fact that we're not 80-20 split anymore, we're 60-40, that will matter. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But the market falling 25% has been okay for us. Now let's think of an example if the market went up 25%. We'll start back at this number, the starting number. If it went up 25% from here, our $80 would now be worth $100. And our $80 bet here would have been the wrong direction. Our $80 bet would have lost us $20. We had $20 in the account and we lost $20. We'd end up having $0 left in our futures account. Now on the face of it, this doesn't look too bad. 100 plus zero adds up to 100. We still have the same amount of money. But this is, this is the worst case scenario for this trade. That is because you no longer are balanced. You no longer have a bet against Ethereum because the website will have canceled your bet. They will have liquidated you when you got close to zero, just before you got to zero, in fact. So if the market, even though it went up 25%, if it were to fall quickly, straight after going up, you were exposed $100 toward, towards Ethereum, so you could lose it all. You could, let's say if it fell 50% from here, you would lose $50. You are no longer balanced. This is a bad outcome. Let's see how we what we could have done to avoid this. Let's next case we'll assume the market goes up 10%. Again, this 10% is starting from this starting point here. Your $80 worth of Ethereum would have gone up 10%, so it will now be worth $88. Your bet in a your bet in the futures market will have been wrong. You would have lost $8. We'll take that out to 20 and we'll say $12 here. So how do you avoid this situation? Because you're worried now about you're getting closer to this 25%, this bad event happening. So how do you avoid it? Well, you need to just sell some of your Ethereum. You now have more than you planned to have at the start. You have $88 worth. So you sell $8 worth of it. Maybe that would be 0 0.005. It'd be about that. $8 worth. So now you only have $80 worth of Ethereum left. At the same time you do that, you need to buy, change your bet basically, change your bet or buy the Ethereum you sold here. That changing your bet won't affect how much money you have. You still have $12 in this account. This account, over in your spot account, you have $80 worth of Ethereum and eight actual dollars. You need to move those eight actual dollars to your futures account, topping the 12 up to 20. Now you are balanced again. You can survive another 25% move. If you're going to go an 80-20 split, we'll look at some of the risk rewards of that now. You need to be ready to make these adjustments in between. Actually, before I look at the other type of splits rather than 80-20, let's look at this same split again and look what happens if the market goes up 100%, because I think that's interesting. Starting from our $80, we go up 100%, we'll have $160 over here. The $20 bet, the, the bet would have gone really bad for us. We would have lost $20 after going up 25% and the website would have canceled our bet. So we'd still have $0 over here. This looks great for us. It looks like we have gone up, um, we have 160 plus zero. We have 160 total. Good news, except I don't think it is because the whole plan of this trade is to keep yourself balanced and not exposed to Ethereum you are now exposed to Ethereum. Every moment over 25%, you have been exposed to Ethereum. If the market falls, you'll lose a lot of money. If you knew the market was gonna go up 100%, you should have put all your money into Ethereum at the start, and you'd have $200. So this is not a good outcome, even though it seems good. If it went up 25 and then fell instantly, you'd lose money. Now, let me talk a little about the split. I chose an 80-20 split. That was purely my choice. I'd like to show you what would happen if you pick, picked some different splits. So on that 80-20 split, we found we were in danger when the market went up 25%. 
let me draw that in here, we were in danger at uh, 25%. On a 50-50 split, you can do out the numbers yourself, think it through, but if you had $50 here and $50 here, you would only be in danger once the market went up 100%. And if you were safer again, a 20-80 split, you would only become in danger if the market went up 400%. Now let me remind you, you do not want this to happen, so you're going to need to do this rebalancing thing we talked about before you get to these numbers. So if you choose an 80-20 split, you're going to have to rebalance. This could be every day. The market can go up 25%. The market can do anything it wants, but it has been known to go up 25% in a day. It's rarely will go up 100% in a day. So if you pick this split, you can probably sleep soundly at night without needing to wake up and make some trades in the middle of the night. If you pick this split down here, you will probably last a week without needing to readjust to rebalance your trade. This might be the one for you to pick. But with this extra safety you get from each of these, you do lose something. Let me add in this column here, a reward. In the first 80-20 split, all of that $80, you're making the money from the bet you make on the futures. This was an $80 size bet. It comes from this number here. If we were to do this as a 50-50 split, you'd only be making money on $50 of your money. Basically, 50% of your money would be working. 80% of your money would be working. 20% of your money would be working. So in a few moments, we'll look at the historical reward we would have got, but basically you will get 80% of it in this scenario. You will get 50% of it in this safer scenario. And in this very safe scenario, you will only get 20% of any reward we see. Hopefully that gives you an idea how to make this trade and a understanding of the risks involved. Now we're gonna go back over to the computer to look at the historical funding rate to see exactly how much money you would make in this trade. How much money I have made in the last three months of doing this trade. Remember, whatever numbers we find, we're gonna to have to multiply by one of these um, risk and reward numbers. I'm gonna choose 80% because that's around about what I use myself. Back on Binance's desktop site, we can find the information for funding by clicking on the index button. I'm sure there's a more sensible way to get there, but I don't know it. On mobile, there is a link called Trading Data, and that will get you to the same spot, and at least that makes sense. Binance tends to change their user interface so often, things can be quite hard to find. Once you're on this page, you can find more information by clicking on Funding Rate History, and then going to the drop down here and choosing Ethereum. Remember, we don't need to use Ethereum. This will work just the same with any other asset. The data shown here is only from the last two weeks. And to get a bigger picture, we need all of these numbers from these 72 different pages. Luckily, we can just download that into a spreadsheet by clicking on this and saving it wherever you want. You'll have the first three columns here, including the date, which I've just hidden. And I've gone ahead and reformatted this column so I can use the numbers a bit more. I've then added in a few, a few more pieces of information. This column is probably the most important one. This sums up all the funding information. So the last one funding is the same, the last two added together, the, the last three added together, the last four, and so on. If we scroll down to look at the last three months of all of these numbers added together, we can see it adds up to about 21.6%. You might think you multiply this by four to get what you'd expect over a year. That would come to about 85%. But if we go ahead and scroll down and look at the, the, the year number that we actually get here, we'll find that it's actually much less, around about here, 365 days around about here, 38%. This is because in the last three months, we've been in a bull market and we will see much higher funding returns in a bull market. Although it is quite interesting to note that while it slowed, Ethereum funding returns didn't go negative for any significant amount of time. But simply adding these numbers isn't the whole picture as the interest you make can be reinvested and compound your returns. In this column, I've assumed that we're gonna reinvest our earnings every week. At the start, the numbers remain very similar, 1.2%, 1.2%, uh, even second, two, three weeks in, they don't change too much. But if we scroll down to three months in, we can see here 23.6% versus 21.4%. 
At the start, I said, in the last three months, this trade has returned me an annualized return of over 100%. This is where I'm getting that number from. I took the real 23.6% that I in fact earned and I compounded it four more times to annualize it. That gets me to about 133%. But remember, if we're doing an 80-20 split, we will only get 80% of that, giving me a 106.4 annualized returns. If you are going to do a much safer 50-50 split, you would be earning a still quite handsome 66.5%. It's quite easy to see why this is my top passive income trade. But wait, there's more. Remember that 80% or 50% of your funds that are in Ethereum, the real funds that you bought on spot, well, you are free to do whatever you want with that. Once it is on hand to rebalance your trade as needed. So you should be able to get an extra few percent lending that out. Although I do recommend you have a look at my Ethereum 2.0 video for a way to get around 10% return on that Ethereum. As I said, this is a complicated trade. So use this video as a starting point to learn more about it. Research, research, research. Don't put money into this trade without fully understanding it. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to help or pop into my Discord server. There's links in the description below as well. This channel is still only starting out, so if you did find this or any other video useful, a like or a subscription would help me out a lot. And if you are signing up to any cryptocurrency site, consider using one of my affiliate links. Thanks for watching and have a great day.